Well, it's that time again, Devos with D. If you're watching this right now, make sure you like and share. If you're watching on YouTube or uh, Church TV, uh, there's going to be some discussion questions at the end of the message. Uh, as I was looking at Pastor D's message as he was digging into Psalms, there was this statement, and I've been hearing it a lot out there right now, and it says, be still and know that I am the Lord. And and sitting still is probably one of the hardest things for me to do. And it feels like that's all we've been doing for the last six weeks is sitting still, waiting for something to happen. But it's not about to do more or, or what's going to happen next. It's, it's just sitting and waiting on God. And that's what Pastor D is going to really challenge us with tonight is uh, looking at God and, and trusting in Him and knowing that He's got this. And so each week I'm excited that we have an opportunity to do this. Uh, this weekend, we're going to be celebrating uh, Mother's Day. It's going to be a great time to really honor them. And then each week, we're going to have our drive-in Wednesday night service. Uh, doesn't matter, rain or shine, we're going to make it happen. We're trying to figure out creative ways where we can still be a community together. Well, for now, let's pray, invite the Holy Spirit in, and see what Pastor D has for us. Uh, Lord, I just thank you tonight for uh, what you have done, what you are doing, and the way that you're shaping our hearts. I pray, God, that we can... Just set aside some distractions for the next 15 uh, minutes, Lord, and know that you have us and that you are in control. God, open our minds and our hearts to be able to, uh, to learn from you tonight. Give us wisdom beyond our understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good evening, people of God. So good to be here with you again. I'm glad you could join me. Um, I miss you guys. Heights, family, miss you. Love you madly. And I'm glad for whoever else is here tune, tuning into this particular devotional. Glad you tuned in and that you're willing to sit down and listen to the Word of God. That's special. I just want you to know that. Very, very special. So I've got some challenging questions to ask you tonight. Are you ready for those? I might be a little longer than usual. Hopefully not. But just hang in there. Hang with me. Uh, don't throw any tomatoes. Uh, let's get into the Word. First question, are you getting restless? I know I am. I'm ready to bust out. It's just like feeling, beginning to feel like I'm in jail, but you know what? I'm still going to follow what the governor is saying. I don't necessarily agree, but I'm still going to follow it because I'm going to, again, obey, the, obey their ruling authority. Are things moving too slow for you right now? They are for me. It's so nice outside. Um, during the day, I am so ready to get out there and enjoy every little bit about springtime because that's the best time of the year, except for summer, of course. Could it be time or could it be a time for listening and preparing for what's ahead? So God is doing something within this slowdown. Should we be listening up? Should we be saying, Lord, what is it that you have for me? What were you trying to get across to me during this time where we have more time on our hands and we can actually stop and listen? In John 15, Jesus talks about their abiding in the vine, staying in the vine. Are you staying in the vine right now? It is good to be with Jesus. It's good to be with the Father. And there's something to gain from spending that quality time. Just like we want to spend quality time with our kids, it's good to spend quality time with the Father and with Jesus. So we are going to be, again, in the book of Psalm. Not Psalms, but the book of Psalm. And we're going to look at a particular Psalm within those books. So they consider Psalm the longest book some people do and that's only if you calculate it by the number of verses chapters or pages it contains 150 psalms and the psalms within the book of psalm has multiple authors like moses and solomon david and the sons of asaph and a few others we are going to be looking at Psalm 46. I don't know if you've ever read that scripture. Some of you have gone through the Bible, done the read through the Bible program, maybe on you version, or maybe you just sat down and read through your Bible. But we're going to Psalm 46. Psalm 46 was written by the sons of Korah. And people believed that it was during the reign of Jehoshaphat. This Psalm speaks of triumphant faith. Let's get into the background a little bit. Who were the sons of Korah? 
You know, I never looked that up. I don't know why I didn't, because I, I like to dig into things, but I had never looked that up before. So I thought I'd share with you who the sons of Korah were. They were distant relations to a man named Korah. So they were probably great, great, great. I don't know how many greats, grandsons of this man named Korah. And the original Korah was a first cousin to Moses and Aaron. He was a Levite chief. And he was probably one of those who shouldered or carried the ark during their time in the desert. If you want to really uh, find out more about Korah's story, you can read that in number 16. Korah did something that uh, didn't work out so good. He rose up, he rebelled against Moses and Aaron. And literally, since God had chosen Moses and Aaron, he was raising up against God himself. Uh, he wanted to be in a certain position. He wanted certain things. And Moses and Aaron didn't have to answer. God answered. And God answered by opening up the earth and swallowing him and all the people that followed him. Wow. That's pretty uh, <laughs> out there. You know, uh, we have earthquakes, but I've never seen purposely the earth opening up and swallowing people. Wow. That is something to behold, I bet. His name meant gap. Or blank, And I think that was because of what happened during Numbers 16. So let's go right to the scripture that we're going to look at tonight. It is Psalm 4610. Psalm 4610. It says there in the NIV, be still and know that I am God. Very simple. Be still and know that I am God. So let's break this down a little bit, and I'm going to break it down into three points, things that jumped out at me. I'm sure there's much more in there because I am no authority, but as I study, I find out things. So let's dig into what I found out just for this time. The first thing is in that scripture, God is saying, be still. This is a wake up call. In the English, it would mean to be quiet, to be calm not to move. But listen to this, how it would be in the Hebrew, so different. It means listen, pay attention, snap out of it, stop striving, stop fearing, let go, surrender, rest in God. That's a lot that comes out of the, that be still in the Hebrew. Let's sum it up. It means stop giving attention to the world. Listen to what the scripture says. And in it, you'll receive peace, love, and guidance from the scripture. Let's look at Psalm 62, verses 5 and 6. Listen to this in the New Living Translation. Let all that I am wait quietly before God, for my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will not be shaken. Wow, there's a lot of things that are being shaken, a lot of businesses, a lot of the stock market is being shaken, the presidency is being shaken, um, finances are being shaken, a lot of things are being shaken, but we stand on the rock who is our God. He is our salvation. He will bring us out. He is going to get us over this hump. Yes, brothers and sisters. Yes, family. Yes, those who are tuned in, friends, guests, whoever you are, God can get you over this hump. I want you to know that today. Let's look at the next thing. That was be still. Be still. Number two, no. Know what? Know God. This speaks of intimacy or closeness to God. Have you ever studied God? He said, what is that? Have you ever found out, dug, a, what wanted to know everything you could possibly know about God? To reflect on him and who he is as a God. To be in awe of him. Totally acknowledging his supremacy. Because he is supreme. 
He is above all. He is the great God. He's above all gods. In Jeremiah 25 and 22 in the ESV, this is what it says. Do you not fear me, declares the Lord? Do you not tremble before me? I place the sand as the boundary to the sea, a perpetual barrier that it cannot pass. Though the waves toss, they cannot prevail. Though they war or roar, they cannot pass over it. How marvelous is that? We have a God that set things in order and nothing can move those boundaries. He set the boundaries and they are going to be where he set them and not where we want them to be. He has boundaries for our lives even. And we don't want to move those boundaries around because it'll get us into trouble. And I don't know about you. I've had enough trouble in my life, so I'm not going to move any more boundaries. Believe you me. Hallelujah. So the first thing is to be still. The second thing is to know. What's the third thing? God is God. He is the only true God. Recognize him for who he is. Place his honor, his wisdom, and reputation above all others. Put him in his rightful place. Did you know God had a rightful place? That he should be chief in your life, the head of your life. That he should be your focus. He should be your primary um, thing that you hold dear. I heard once that we have 50,000 thoughts a day. Wow. I've never counted that, but that's a lot going through a person's mind. Are these thoughts that you're having... Are they on God's word and on his greatness? Who is God really? Let's find out in scripture. I went through some scriptures in the ESV that tell us who our God is. And it, it really stimulated my heart. I had such joy just thinking about how great our God is. Listen to this. Again, it's from the English Standard Version. He is spirit. And this is all from scripture now. I didn't make any of this up. This is not what I want God to be. This is exactly who scripture says he is. Let's start again. He is spirit. He is immortal. He is visible and invisible. He inhabits eternity. He is not a man. He created all things in heaven and earth. He is the first and the last. He is love. He is merciful. He is good and forgiving. He is just and upright. He is faithful and without iniquity. He keeps covenant. Did you know our God is not going to lie? He's not going to turn from what he said. He keeps his agreements. Not everybody keeps their agreements. So we're used to people saying one thing and doing another. God's not like that. He never lies. He's in our midst. He is redeemer. He saves. He is the only wise God and nothing is too hard for him. What do you think? Can you trust that kind of God? Listen to this quote and I'm done. See, I thought it was going to be longer, but praise God, I got those three points in. Be still. No, God is God. Listen to this quote. Never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. That's Corey Tim Boom. And Corey Tim Boom was in a concentration camp. She was the, in a German or a Nazi concentration camp during the war. And she was the only one who survived of her family. Everyone else in her family died in that concentration camp. She could have been downhearted. She could have said, God, uh, I, why am I trusting him? He hasn't done anything. He let my family die. But she said, never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. Do you know your God better today? I hope so. Keep digging in your scripture. Keep digging in the Bible. Keep looking towards God. Keep trying to find out more about him. 
because he's a great God. He's our God and Father, and he loves us dearly. And even though we're still in our houses, we're still standing in place, and some things are opening up, God is going to put us on the top. We will rise above. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, I just give you thanks and praise. You are a mighty God. We rejoice that we're your children and that you watch over us, that you keep us, that you never slumber nor, nor sleep. Thank you for all that you're doing, even the things that you're doing behind the scenes that we can't see. Lord, you're making things right. You're turning things around. And we trust you today, God. We trust you today. And we ask that you bless our households, that you keep us and guide us by your spirit, that you drive out the fear that sometimes tries to haunt us. And we give you all the thanks and all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.